Imagine a world where things can pop into existence seemingly out of nothing and disappear just as quickly. Imagine a world where you can be everywhere in the universe at the same time and yet nobody can know precisely where you are. According to our best theory of nature, the standard model of particle physics, this is exactly how the world behaves, because at its heart lies the strange theory of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics took away all the certainty that classical mechanics have put into, put into nature. In, in the classical world, everything goes like clockwork. If you know where everything starts and how it's moving, you can predict where everything's going to end up. Quantum mechanics has this concept of uncertainty built in. We can't know anything with absolute certainty. We can only work out probabilities of different outcomes happening. We have a very hazy view of matter because quantum mechanics tells us that matter doesn't just consist of particles. Particles can also behave as waves. And it's a very confusing and non-intuitive way of looking at the universe, something that we're not really used to at all. Now, quantum mechanics at first sight seems like a pretty strange view of the world. But it's experiments like this, the photoelectric effect, done at the turn of the 20th century, that forced us into that picture. Now, this is a gold leaf electroscope, and it's charged up. There's an excess of electrons on this plate, which causes the gold leaf to rise. Now, watch what happens when I turn a light on. The light forces the electrons off the plate, discharging it, and the leaf falls back down again. Now that's pretty easy to understand. What isn't is that the energy of the electrons that come off the plate depends not on the brightness of the light, but only of the colour. Now that is impossible to understand if you think of light as a wave motion. And it took Albert Einstein to come up with the correct explanation. He said that you can picture light as a stream of particles called photons, and not as a wave and the energy of each photon depends only on the colour. That realisation, that explanation of the photoelectric effect, lies at the heart and at the foundation of quantum theory. Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect presented a new challenge to scientists. Up until this time, they had explained the properties of light in terms of waves. Suddenly, it seemed that light could also behave like particles. How could this be? The resolution to this seeming paradox had to wait for three of the giants of 20th century physics, Feynman, Schwinger and Tomonaga. Working independently throughout the 1940s, they discovered a quantum theory of light, quantum electrodynamics, or QED. Where Einstein had explained the photoelectric effect in terms of particles, Feynman and his contemporaries went even further. With quantum electrodynamics, they provided a mathematical way to explain all the wave behaviour of light in terms of particles. QED was a major milestone in our understanding of nature. I think Feynman referred to QED as the jewel of physics. Um, probably not because he invented it, uh, but uh, it explains all of physics outside the nucleus and accepting gravity. Okay? So it is a theory that explains the interactions of uh, matter particles with one another um, via the electromagnetic force and that drives all of physics and chemistry and material science. Um, and so it is, it's, it's a theory of almost everything. As well as explaining the behaviour of light, QED provided a revolutionary way to look at forces. Instead of thinking in terms of force fields, as Newton and Maxwell had done, QED explained the electromagnetic force in terms of particles. To understand how it works, imagine two electrons approaching each other. We know that they'll move apart because like charges repel. QED says that the repulsion is caused by a photon, a particle of light, being transferred between the two electrons. So the photon is the particle that carries the electromagnetic force. QED proved so successful that it seemed natural to look for quantum theories of the other forces that concern us as particle physicists, the weak and strong nuclear forces. 
By the mid-1970s, theorists had predicted that the strong force required eight exchange particles called gluons, and the weak force required three, the W plus, the W minus, and the Z. The problem was that these were just mathematical predictions. And as with everything else in science, if you want to be really sure about something, you have to see it. And to see it, you need one of these, a particle accelerator. Scientists have been building particle accelerators since the late 1920s. As well as letting us look at the structure of matter, they allow us to create hitherto unseen particles that our theories tell us should exist, like the elusive gluon. The secret to creating new particles lies in the most famous equation in science, E equals mc squared. What this equation means is that mass and energy are interchangeable. Particle accelerators make use of this. They speed particles up and smash them together. The energy from the collision can turn into new particles. It was in 1979, when particle physicists still wore flares, that a brand new particle detector called PETRA revealed the first spectacular evidence for a force-carrying particle besides the photon. The detector produced results like this, which could only be explained by the particle that carries the strong force, the gluon.